Shalom to the Lord's elect. Let's begin this lesson by first and foremost giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer. Our Savior, Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles, the elders, the bishops out of the great millstone that taught us this truth. And salutation, peace to my fellow laborers, the 144,000. The tabernacle of David doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Exalting the name of our power, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. And the large multitude, men, women, children, whom our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, is going to have mercy upon. I pray that in this message here, find all of you in perfect peace as we wait for the second coming of our Lord, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Again, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai. Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Kohala Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Brakwa Kodash. Let's open it up with a quick precept. And we're going to allow our friend here, George Galloway, to open it up for us. He is in Kazan, Russia, where the BRICS summit is taking place, and he has a lot to say. So we're going to allow him to speak, and we have a couple of precepts, we have a couple of articles to bring out. Israel is preparing to attack Iran. And um, yeah, and the Israel military is losing badly in Lebanon. And yes, things are happening, family. Eh? Don't be discouraged. Things are happening. Things are moving really quick. The days are flying by. But let's go to here. I want to go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Now let's pick it up from verse verse 4. Verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 3. Jeremiah 33. For lo, the days come, says the Lord Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. You see, the two nations are coming together. Remember we were divided. The northern tribe and the southern tribe. But this time we're going to be a unit. That's what the Lord says. You know, we're going to be like the sand of the sea. You see. Again, he said, for lo, Jeremiah 30 verse 3. For lo, the days come, it says the Lord, Yahweh, that I will bring again, again. Meaning well, at one point we were back in Jerusalem and we lost it. But now the Lord says he's going to bring us back again. And bring again the captivity. We were spread among all these nations. We serve the nations now. It's time to go home. Eh? That I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Says the Lord Yahweh. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers. And they shall possess it. And there, and these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. But before that happened, he's going to tell us that well, there is a, 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 a tribulation that we all have to go through. But remember that Lord is going to take us home. And the elect will be protected through the tribulation. But we're going to be here. We're going to see a lot of dead bodies. And remember, a lot of family chaos. We are about to go through it. But the Lord is with us. Again, remember Psalm 34 verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamped round about those that fear him. Okay. Jeremiah 30 verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord Yahweh, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, not of peace. You hear that? Why? We have heard a voice of trembling. You go on social media, everybody's worried about what is coming. People are having dreams 
about soldiers moving in, United Nations troops moving in, grabbing people, putting them in FEMA camps. That's right. Chaos is coming. That's what the Lord, Jeremiah, saw this. He says, For thus says the Lord, Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. He says, Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with a child. Because what they are witnessing, what this, the prophets saw, is that family, men were so stressed out that it appears that they, they look like a woman who's about to have a child. Because she's exhausted, she's in pain, eh? she can't think straight. So much is going on at the same time. That's what Jeremiah saw. He says, ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? As a woman in travail. And all faces are turned into paleness. That's the stress that is coming upon the earth. The terror the Lord is bringing upon the earth. But here, this is what? This is the comfort that the Lord says. He says here, Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. How shall I say the same thing in the book of Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22? And Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 also repeated the same thing. He says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it's even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. This meeting taking place in what? In Kazan family is going to shake the world. Everybody knows that America is over for America. And if, you, if, if anybody tells you that America is going to sit back and watch Russia take over and the world, now that's not going to happen. So they are about to do something stupid. And that's going to lead to the end of what America, because this is what the Lord did. The Lord is going to harden Pharaoh's heart, which is why the Esau eat him. Eh? Modern day Pharaoh is what Esau. The Lord divided the kingdom and he's going to use Russia to destroy America. And that's what we have to prophesy, 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 prophesy. That's the testimony of our king, our redeemer, our shy. Say it before it happens. So the Lord gets the glory and the honor and the praises. Now let's go to George Galloway. Hear what he has to say. This is his monologue this afternoon from Kazan, Russia. Yes, fair use art, fair use art. I'm going to let him speak through and family. And then we're going to bring a few, uh, what is it called, articles here. And then we're going to close it. A few precepts. And then we're going to give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Things are happening. All right, let's go. 36 presidents and prime ministers are here just to show how isolated Russia is. Just to show what an international pariah President Vladimir Putin is. 36 presidents and prime ministers. The countries of the global south have coalesced together in Kazan. Tatarstan, a Muslim republic within the Russian Federation. It is a truly momentous sight. I have never been part of or seen anything quite like this. I grew up in the shadow of Bretton Woods in 1945, which set the economic and fiscal architecture for Western societies after the end of the Second World War. Bretton Woods, in my lifetime, was whispered reverently it was a kind of load star so the brenton wood is when america became uh, the american currency the dollar became the world reserve currency okay so let's go to which we looked it was the mother ship well kazan bricks 2024 will shape the lives of my children your children and their children yet unborn the truth is it and that's the mistake that these people make and the Bible says their inward thought is that what? Family, I gotta bring that out quickly. Please, oh, please uh, bear with me. Let's go to the book of uh, <clears throat> Psalm. Because they are, everybody is saying that the, the, the Russia, this move is going to, you know, change the world, blah, blah, blah. Russia, the BRICS is going to be the next king on the, on, on the hill. No, 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 no. You see, that's, this is, that's why he said, the Bible said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And as the prophets of the Lord, the mouthpiece of the Lord, we are here to tell you that that's not how things are going to play out. The Lord is just using Russia right now to destroy America and they are not going to ruin us. Okay, again, he says, what? 
uh, Psalm 49, 11, their inward thought is that what their houses, meaning their kingdoms, their rulership shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. That's not it. You see, this is no, no, nobody's going to rule. That's their, their inward thought. That's why the Bible says, why do they heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Because that's very, that's vain. And again, let me go here. Psalm 40, is it Psalm 40? Shoot. Is it 44? Psalm 44? Psalm 44, 6, if my memory serves me right. It says here. Is it 46? Is it some 46 or Isaiah? Yeah, it says here, the word is Psalm 46. It says here, the most high is in the midst. It says the power is in the midst. Psalm 46, verse 5. The most high is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The most high shall help her. And that right early, talking about the Israelites, but here, the heathen raged. You hear that? The heathen, they raged. Because it says, when, when they said peace and peace, and they said, when they, they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them like a woman in travail. You see? They think Russia is going to save the whole world. No, 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 no. Here, Psalm 46, verse 6. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord Yahweh of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he have made in the earth. That's what is coming. What desolation that the, the whole place about to lay waste. Dead bodies everywhere. This is what is coming upon the earth. Eh? You see, everybody's going to know who the Lord is. But let's continue here. A new world is being born here. It's not just that half the population of the world was sitting around a single table. It's not just that the economic indicators of BRICS, the GDP of the BRICS companies, countries combined are now greater than the G7 once all powerful. It's not just that half the world and half the wealth of the world is here under one roof, is here just a block away from me. If you hear the sirens, it's one or other of the 36 presidents and prime ministers speeding by in their high security cavalcades. The big decisions that were made today are now tumbling out. By Sunday, they'll all be out. So stay tuned for that in the mother of all talk shows. But the ones I can bring you now are this. Iran is now a member of BRICS, a momentous decision taken unanimously by the other members of the alliance, and BRICS will now include a second I, Iran, after India. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa were once upon a time the members of BRICS. Now, 36 members and <coughs> a list as long as your arm of people who are candidate members or who wish to become candidate members of BRICS. Not yet announced, but I can tell you exclusively, is a new commodities exchange. For those of you who know nothing about economics, that might not sound like a big deal. But trust me, it's a very big deal indeed, because these people in this BRICS are leading countries which contain the greatest concentration of natural resources, commodities, and raw materials to be found anywhere on the planet. Russia itself is not just the biggest country in Europe, it is the biggest country in the world. Russia itself is the biggest energy supplier. Russia itself holds gold and silver and rare mineral, minerals, rare earth materials that are vital for every aeroplane you fly on, every car you drive, every mobile telephone 
you hold. Russia is an economic superpower and it is booming. In the face of the biggest boomerang ever fashioned by anyone ever in any place, we threw that boomerang at Russia and it has come back and smacked us all right in the face. Our economies are sinking. Russia's economy is booming. But if you add the other countries of the BRICS and their natural resources, you can imagine the importance of a commodities exchange within the BRICS. They'll be able to exchange oil, be able to exchange gas, be able to exchange material of all kinds, vital economic material, and the dollar won't get a look in. None of it will be conducted in the US dollar. One of the first and greatest ambitions of the BRICS and of its current leader, Russia, was that the dollar hegemony must end. The dollar was weaponized, said President Putin, and it was a very big mistake. He speaks with some bitterness, having had hundreds of billions of his own dollars, Russia's own dollars, stolen, sequestered, confiscated by uh, Western countries. And Britain is actually now paying for the weapons that we are sending to Ukraine using stolen Russian assets that were frozen in London when the war in Ukraine began. It is the ultimate insult and relations with Britain hit rock bottom today, at least in contemporary terms, when a British diplomat assaulted Russian journalists at the airport in Moscow. Charges would be filed if not for his diplomatic immunity, but it goes to show how severely damaged our relations between Britain and Russia. Never great, it has to be said, long before Putin, long before the Bolshevik Revolution, going right back into the middle of the 19th century, there is a particular Russophobia, a hatred, fear and loathing of Russia within the British Isles. That's what the original Crimea War was all about. But the Western countries are not taking all of this easily. Neither are they taking it lying down. President Erdogan of Turkey landed in Kazan this afternoon, roughly at 3 p.m. Roughly at seven minutes past 3 p.m., a major terrorist attack was launched against an aerospace factory in the Kazan district of Ankara in Turkey. Nothing could be more obvious. A raid by terrorists, presumably from the PKK, ordered, funded, and armed by the CIA handlers who run the organization, has attacked a factory and taken hostages in a factory and killed several people in a district called Kazan. Just to make the point that Turkey joining the BRICS would be as popular as a pork chop at a Muslim wedding for the Western handlers. The Western handlers would have to face the possibility of a NATO member, a candidate member of the European Union for the first time applying to join the BRICS. Well, they have applied. They are now candidate members to join the BRICS. If Turkey joins in the next 12 months before the next summit, that will be of profound importance to the world economic and political configuration that we have today. What will NATO do? Will they kick Turkey out of NATO? Can they kick Turkey out of NATO? Will the EU finally scrap the 20-year forlorn wait of Turkey to join the European Union? How will that go down with the Turkish diaspora? in the European Union. There are millions of Turkish citizens, loyalists to Erdogan, almost all in the European countries. If Turkey is to be insulted, slapped in the face, kicked in the teeth, because it has freely chosen to join an entirely voluntary international alliance that Washington doesn't like, that will have serious implications in the West. Well, Russia didn't just announce the entry of Iran into the BRICS, 
they announced that Russia will build stages two and three of Iran's nuclear power plant. To get some measure on what kind of change that is, just four years ago, Russia refused to participate in the building of Iran's nuclear power plant. Now, Russia is in total going to build state. I wasn't going to do this, but I was going to allow him to speak through, but the precept has to come up. Let's go to the book of, um, let's do this quickly, the book of Ezekiel, because he's talking about Russia changing its mind to help, uh, what is it called, uh, Iran build its nuclear power plant. So here we go. You see, the Bible is speaking out loudly. Ezekiel 38. We've gone here many, many times. Ezekiel 38 is always go back to what? Gog and Magog. The future is a prophecy about Gog, the future invasion of Israel. Again, we say Israel is going to be leveled. Level, okay? Level, destroyed, okay? That's what is coming. It's going to be Russia and its allies. But we're going to jump to verse 5. It says Persia, Ethiopia, eh? Persia, which is modern day Iran, Ethiopia and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Goma and all his band, the house of Togoma. He mentioned what? He mentioned Turkey. Turkey, all these are the nations the Lord is giving to Russia. And eh? to support Russia to, uh, to destroy Israel and to destroy America. He said Togoma of the North Quarters and all his bands. Bands represent what the military and many people with it. There will be other nations joining Russia. Okay, other nations joining Russia to uh, to destroy Israel and America. He said, "Be thou prepared." He's telling God, "You Russia, I want you to prepare, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company, all the nations that I'm going to give to you. I want you to make sure that they are well equipped." So when he is talking about Russia building the nuclear weapons of Iran, family, that's right. This fulfilled prophecy. Okay. It says here, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Meaning what? Take control of them. Prepare for thyself. And also be make sure that these nations that I'm giving you, they are also well equipped. Let's read another version here. NLT said, get ready. Be prepared. Keep all the armies around you mobilized and take command of them. You hear that? Take command of them. Let's read the Amplified Version. Say, you, Gog, Russia, you, Russia, be prepared. Prepare yourself, you and all your hordes that are assembled around you, and be a guard and look out for them. Hear that? Look out for them. So when he says that Russia now changes mind to support Iran and build Iran, and build Iran nuclear, web, uh, nuclear plant, and also Iran became a what? BRICS member. We see. Let's continue. Stages two and three of these nuclear power plants. Giving Russia now a stake in Iran's nuclear industry. That's important because maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, certainly sometime soon, Benjamin Netanyahu is going to launch a kamikaze attack on Iran's nuclear facilities, or its oil industry, or its political leadership, or any permutation of those, including the possibility of all three of those. Iran is locked and loaded for the response. It will not delay in delivering that response. That response is promised to be condign punishment. It is promised to be unprecedented. It is promised to be multiples, exponential, multiples of any attack that Iran has responded to before. Israel will presumably respond back, or America will do it on its behalf. And if that happens, Iran will respond again, again, exponentially more powerfully than the last. And then we might all be into World War III, because Russia has said today that it will not stand by and watch Iran being attacked by its enemies. Russia will be involved in the defense of Iran. Russia is a nuclear superpower. So is the United States of America. If even the most foolish person watching doesn't understand that that could be the road to nuclear Armageddon, then you're watching the wrong program. 
The truth is, the world is now poised on a knife edge between the pluralist, anti-hegemonic development of BRICS, a voluntary association of people who are friends with each other, who are ready to resolve conflicts with each other. India and China met today. Prime Minister Modi, President Xi Jinping met today and resolved their long-standing border dispute with each other, which has erupted three times in Indo-Chinese wars. That's what BRICS can be. BRICS can be not just the new Bretton Woods. BRICS can be the new United Nations. For BRICS is what the United Nations was supposed to have been before it became paralyzed by the veto powers of Britain, the United States, and usually France in ossifying the divisions that exist in the world. BRICS exists to solve those divisions. BRICS exists so that people can mutually benefit, win-win solutions, rather than the zero-sum game, winner-takes-all, our way or the highway approach of the Western powers led by the United States of America. Let me turn to the United States of America. I have been predicting to you uh, for several weeks now. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to talk about the election, but you can check out the rest of this monologue at the mother of all talk show, George Galloway. Okay, the George Galloway show. You can check it out, episode 389. Okay, but let's bring out this article here, the How Tenna is reporting. It says shooting war approaches fast. Airlines just got the word. So yeah, most airlines are now finally um, stopping their services to Israel and also Lebanon. But let's read on. A ferocious shooting war between Israel and Iran is now approaching very fast. Word got out to the airlines. Okay, Turkish Airlines, Pegasus, Emirates, Lufthansa, and Qatar Airways have just suspended all their flights to Iran until further notice. Like you heard George says that what well, it could be the next twelve or forty eight hours, who knows? But we know that that attack is coming. And it's not going to be any regular attack on Iran. This is going to be ferocious. And we say Brakata Yahawa Bashem Yahushai. And the Lord is about to show his power. America is going to be destroyed. Israel is going to be destroyed. The war of Armageddon. And we have less than two weeks before the election. Yeah, so much things. Things are happening, family. Things are happening. Yeah, continue to stay locked in. We say, Brakate Yahawa Bashem Yahusha Bashem Kakodash. It says, International airlines in response to escalating conflict in the Middle East have suspended flights to the region, including Israel, Lebanon, and Iraq. Key carriers such as Air France and Delta have just paused operations impacting schedule until 2025 for some flights. They aren't sending any more planes in and they are rapidly working to get whatever planes are already there out. Israel made clear they are going to hit Iran hard. It has already previously leaked out that infrastructure such as ports, airports, oil fields and extra, etc., will be hit. Hence, the action by airlines today. Iran has made it clear they will hit back immediately if attacked by Israel again. And they too will hit Israel infrastructure, infrastructure very hard. Shooting war approaches fast. We say, Barakata Yahawa, Bahashem Yahushai. And this is what I mentioned earlier. It says here, let me see if it, this will translate. This is from Pro News. Armageddon for Israel tanks in 21 days, 28 Merkava uh, uh, tanks destroyed by Hezbollah anti-tank weapons. They are losing badly. That's why they are dropping bombs on pregnant women, children, elderly. Because when they come to Amano, Amano, when they have to actually face and fight Hezbollah, they can't fight. So they're just going out there, just dropping bomb, bomb from, the, from, the, from, the, from planes and just leveling up apartment building. Okay, but when it comes to Amano Amano, they are losing badly. Eh? It says here, different Hezbollah appears to be facing the Israelis and the losses of Merkava tanks 
considered the best protected tanks appear to exceed those of the 2006 invasion. In just three weeks of fighting, and these battles are just the beginning, 28 self-defense Merkava tanks have come under devastating fire in just three weeks. You hear that? Three weeks. 28 tanks, gone. And the map shows how many areas have been hit with anti-tank weapons and reveals that the fighting still hasn't gone beyond border dispute. We say, Barakata Yahawa Ba'ashem Yahushai Ba'ashem Rukakudash. And here, like overnight, it says overnight, Russia sink 22 Ukrainian ships in the Black Sea. Think about that for a second. 22 Ukrainian ships in the Black Sea were sunk. Listen to this. Overnight, Russian missile hit 22 ships in the Black Sea. The Ukrainian shadow fleet no longer exists. The ships went down with not only their cargo, but with Ukraine uh, special forces, I think. Right, that the GUR is one of their special forces personnel and NATO troops, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization troops on board of these ships. The family, everything has been hush hush. Yeah, so family, desperation is coming. Esau, America, and NATO, the West is losing badly. And if you think they are going to sit back and, and do nothing about it, you're sadly mistaken because everything is, everything is depending on it. American dollar is done away with family. It is over for the West. It is over for the West. Putin is defeating NATO right now. This is the end of an empire. And again, Putin and his allies are not going to win. The Lord is just using them to bring this kingdom down. Multipolar world order. Leading role of emerging economies and Western debt. Key takeaways from Putin breaks address. That's today. The Russian president's speech in Kazan focused on the group's financial integration and new development prospects. I want to read this particular uh, paragraph. World trade and the global economy as a whole are undergoing significant changes. The Russian president told the extended format BRICS meeting. The center of business activity is gradually shifting towards developing markets. He added, a multipolar model is being formed, which is launching a new wave of growth, primarily due to the countries of the global south and east and the naturally the BRICS countries. See what the Lord is doing? Yahweh Shai said it best. A kingdom divided cannot stand. And that's what we are witnessing. Family, I don't want this thing to be too long. I just want to bring it out, feed the sheep, you know, comfort the, the, the hopeful elect through the spirit and power of our king. Our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, he's the one that allows us to do these lessons. His spirit is in us to continue to comfort the sheep like he always asks us to do. Just feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. And we know that you, we love the king. Okay? We love the king. So, you know, we're doing everything in our power to please the king. So that when the time comes, Jacob's trouble comes, he will have mercy not just on me, but also on you. Okay, everybody, those that believe in his testimony, that's what we are waiting for, we're hoping for. All right, so I'm going to end it here. I'm going to end it here. But again, I always like this year. Let's close it with, uh, let's close it here with, uh, <sighs> let's go to second Ezra. Where is it? Because we're always waiting for that immortality, you know. The fact that there will be no separation among us. We're going to be one family. We're going to live among each other. No other nation is going to come near us. You know, we say never seen Esau, Edom. My goodness, man. You know, just having our own place to ourselves. Having Yahweh Shai living among us. You know, that's what we're waiting for. Said, But the day of doom, Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. That's what we're waiting for. And the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is passed. And then again, I always look up the word doom. This is how this kingdom is going to end. Look up the, 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 the doom. Look up doom. It says here, what? Death, destruction, or some other terrible fate. That's how this kingdom is going to end. And the immortality, which is what? The, the hopeful elect Israelites receiving new bodies. My goodness, man, family, even 
receiving you by the first seeing our king face to face, Yahweh Shai. You know, he, him changing us, giving us our new body. Beloved, we can't wait, man. We can't wait. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you were edified. And again, our praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakudash. Always double, double honors to our head apostles, the elders, the bishop out of the great millstone. And salutation, peace to the Lord, select the tabernacle of David, the 144,000. And followed by the large multitude, men, women, children, whom our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, is going to have mercy upon. Again, Shalom.